now we're now we're we're recording uh, on the Black Knowledge Matters program, uh, hosted tonight by the co-founder of Wose Community Church, Wose Community Minister Makalisi Oso Sawandi. So, take it away, sir. the The floor is yours. It's just good to be here with you all. Uh, good to see your faces, feel your spirits. Uh, kind of warming, warming from this. See, I think the high temperature here today was about 39. <laughs> and uh, right now it's uh, back down to 32. I'm going to, uh, it, uh, mm. forecast is going to go to 27. So Whoa. enjoy <laughs> the coolness. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I just give thanks for this opportunity to share something with you and uh, a couple of things. I know Minister Imhotep mentioned I was gonna talk about the, the nature neath. And I do have a, just a couple of things about neath that I wanna share, but I, my main focus this evening will be on uh, Amin Ra and uh, something like becoming one of or one with Amin Ra. And what's what's uh, what's what I understand, you know, communicated to us in that metal nature symbol. That's uh, communicating to us the name, but not only the name, but the spirit, the character of Amin Ra, and um, our calling, our our challenge, our, our gift, our blessing of uh, uh, incorporating, nurturing, cultivating. Uh, that essence within ourselves. But uh, first thing I want to share with you about uh, what I, what I a, a few years ago, grew to understand um, about the nature of need and the relationship uh, between uh, the, 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 the creative activities that, that's accredited to her, uh, a, feminine, a feminine force, a feminine aspect of, of nature, and uh, the, the Kwanzaa tradition, Nguzo Saba, uh, more, more, more specifically, uh, the Mkeka. Okay, uh, even before, before Kemet was Kemet, uh, in pre dynastic era, there was this tradition, and our ancestors believed that creation was, was woven into existence by a feminine aspect of the Most High. And that that aspect got to be named Neith. And you know, if you want to go and look it up and and, and uh, do a little research on Neith, N E I T H. Um, and and so uh, she, she was 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 known to be uh, you know the, the, the nature of, of of weaving, and she was also known to be a, a great warrior, you know, protecting protecting the land, protecting the, the, the citizens. But uh, as, as this, you know, this, this concept of, of, of her being the one that wove creation into being, and, and in the, the 42 different gnomes or, or, or communities uh, that, that uh, would, would come to be part of Kemet, and, and the, there were different, different traditions that, that people had there. And uh, one, one of the most common things was in in the um, in the shrines that they would create for their sacred uh, symbols, um, well, they, they would almost weave those things into being. You know, taking taking the uh, materials out of the out of the out of the forest and putting them together to create the shrines. But when you got around to the the sacred symbols that they wanted to place within the shrine, what they what they Put there is flooring for the shrine was a woven mat, and and they placed this, their their sacred symbols on the woven mat. It was in a place in the various communities where people could come and and do their rituals, do their prayers, do their meditations, do what they would do to strengthen their their spirits. And uh, even even after you know when Kemet became Kemet and 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 the, the technology there grew to the place where uh, they could create. Uh, shrines and, and the flooring for shrines out of stone. I mean, this 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 concept of the 
of uh, you know the wovenness of creation and, and the sacred uh, role that the woven mat played within the shrines. They were they were led to to take their tooling when they put down a stone floor and etch a likeness, a simulation of uh, of a woven mat into that stone, and then you know place their their sacred symbols on that uh, foundation. And so it it struck me when I learned about this that because I hadn't read this anywhere when, when you know presentations about about Kwanzaa about the Kinara not the or about the Umkeka. I hadn't read that anywhere, not any of Kuranga's work or any anybody else's uh, works, but that struck me that hmm, this woven mat, this 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 this, this uh, uh, dedication to that concept by our by our ancestors that they would, even when they got to doing stone structures, they would they would etch a symbol of a woven mat on that stone before they would place their sacred objects. Well here we have this Mkeka in the in the Kwanzaa tradition in which uh, in my view every, everything that goes there is, is sacred you know we put a symbol for the ancestors on that woven mat we put the 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 the, the, the years of corn on that woven mat our children um, and even the gifts that we that we share that, that represent the works that we have done together so it's all it's all about it's all about sacredness and even in the uh, in the ifa a, a tradition they they have like like many and most African traditions have woven mats. When you go to, to a spiritual leader in the community for some assistance, they might bring out the woven mat and they do different things with it. But in the Ifa tradition, they they believe that you know whatever is done on the mat or before the mat is is is, a, is an invitation that the, the divine dimensions of uh, creation would be open to us, to the people that are involved in the, in the ritual, in the ceremony, and we would, we would grow in understanding our place, our roles, our responsibilities, our blessings, um, uh, you know, through through the, the presence of the mat and our dedication to what it represents. So, uh, like I said, that's, that's something that has stuck with me. And when we come to Kwanzaa and Bulo Saba, and what, what that all means, you know, it's it's not just a a, a, a week long celebration. It's it's something that needs to be with us, in us, working through us, at all times. In my view, given that that experience that I had with the, uh, and understanding what Neat represents, what Neat did, and what how it how it resonated with our people, our ancestors, way back in the day. So that's, that's basically what I wanted to share with you about that. I, I don't know if, if anybody has a thought about it, anything they want to share, question they want to raise, comment before we move on um, to the uh, Amin Ra materials. Okay, well. I, I just want to say that, um, you, you know, because I, because that was one of the things that puzzled me about um, Kwanzaa when I first got introduced to it, them them keka, and I, I, you know, I knew the definition, but but it wasn't until I read your article that I understood, you know, a really cosmological significance to it. Uh, I appreciate you uh, uh, pointing that out to the community, and I, I think that's good to know. You know, because it represents the foundation. Yeah, we talk about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Mkeka, the foundation, it's our, our history. Well, let's, let's get into that detail about the history and where 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 it can can lead us and help us to go. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna try to share a screen thing here and see if I can <laughs> manage it. Okay. All right. Let's see. Some of you, you see, I, I, when I was when I was uh, given the opportunity to do a, a meditation on Sunday a few Sundays ago, we were, we were working on this topic a bit. But there's some details that we didn't get into, and so I just like to share them with you. And and the basic, as I'm reviewing this, the basic. Uh, uh, 
who see as scripture, uh, writing that, that gives context to this is, uh, what is it? there's a couple of them. From the book of, uh, whose book is this? Uh, the book of Patahotep, passage number four. It says, be diligent. As long as you live, always doing more than is commanded of you. Do not misuse your time while following your heart. For it is offensive to the soul to waste one's time. Do not lose the daily opportunity to increase that which you have. Diligence produces gains, and gains do not endure when diligence is abandoned. I want to repeat the last part of that. Do not lose the daily opportunity to increase that which you have. Diligence produces gains, and gains do not endure when diligence is abandoned. So, uh, as this is this is raising the question: do, Does does Amin Ra, nature of nature root? Does Almighty God live in you and through you? And the question: What are these the, 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 this image? These symbols that communicate the name of Amin Ra. Uh, say to you about you. So let's let me offer this following, beginning with the profound insight from Brother Ikwe Armas, 2000 season, something that most of us, all of us right now, I'm sure, are really familiar with. That there is indeed a great force in the world, spiritual and able to change the physical universe, but that force is not something cut off and separate from ourselves. It is an energy in us strongest in our working, breathing, thinking together as one people, weakest when we are scattered, confused, broken into individual, unconnected fragments. Um, and so this in, in my study reflection on what this symbol is saying, these the, the different uh, aspects of it. Uh, I said the following is based on the intellectual and intuitive understandings that the components of the name of Amin Ra are doorways that open um, to communions of consciousness and power, communions at the heart of the most high and the hearts of our sacred ancestors call our hearts to attend. And faith is the key. And informed meditative practice is the energy by which to enter and immerse ourselves in these communions of sacred consciousness to which we are invited. And I, and I do use this material largely as a as meditation for myself and uh, you know, you may, want to use it that way, or you may find some other way to use it, but that's that's all right. So let me share what, what I'm understanding about the, this first symbol, that budding reed leaf. It's on the left side of the uh, image up here, the budding reed leaf. It's a... Uh, uh, let's see, how do we move it? The, oh, there it is, okay. Uh, <laughs> this is new stuff for me. Okay, the first symbol is that budding really, which communicates the ah in Amin. Ah. Further, it communicates that Amin Ra is the great spirit of life, the first principle of life, the one having the power to become the many. And I don't know if you, if you ever noticed, we used to go up there in Tilden Park and other places and and they'd be around the little ponds. They'd have you have these these uh, reeds growing, and they'd have their blossoms up there, and their big flowery, fluffy heads. Um, and so the question here is: Have you ever noticed the reeds in bloom around bodies of water? How their fluffy blooms, containing innumerable seeds, are stirred by the breeze to those seeds uh, to carry those seeds to fertile spots of soil. To, to begin new life. I, feel like, you know, I guess our, our ancestors you know, reflected on that and, and their thoughts, their understandings about the most high and, and, and creation and human existence in it. Um, they found that to be a, a, a symbol. So, um, so we, we, we want to you know, use that symbol to help us understand about ourselves that we, we use you know, every, every ounce, every aspect of our being um, to, to share the, the spiritual consciousness, to share the, the realities of life and existence that we understand, for those who are open to it, uh, we want to be diligent 
in, in that kind of pursuit. And so uh, relative to that, now I've come up with these, these words. And I was reading something in, uh, in Wayne Chandler's book and he was, he was talking about um, um, how we got around to, to written language and all of the, the different kinds of languages that invaded Kemet and, and, and took our traditions. Uh, we, we lost something in, in, in not being able to, to allow these symbols, the metronature symbols to, to speak their message to us and not be limited by what uh, people could write, especially foreigners who, who were trying to discredit who, who our ancestors were and are. Um, but, but at any rate, you know, I've, I've come up with some words that I, that I feel uh, are appropriate for what this, this symbol is saying, this first symbol here. Um, you see it on the screen up to the right, divine Holy Spirit, great spirit of life. Your sacred essence within calls me to live the sacred life. The life of truth and justice, balance and harmony, righteousness, divine right order and reciprocity. When every cell and fiber of the temple that I be always be set happy in me. Um, and then in, in a meditative way of using Amen Ra. And we'll get back to a bit of what that means uh, as we go along here. But uh, th those words I, that, I, that I see is, you know, this, this reed leaf and the power for the, of the many to become one, and however much of that power is entrusted unto us, because the spirit of Maud is entrusted unto us, as our scholars have helped us to understand, Dr. Obega in particular, and for in my case, reading, reading his work there at you, our ancestors understood that we were, we were created by the creator to continue the process of creation. And if it's done through Mark, then that's Mark that's within us. Um, and, and, and we're to use that every day in every way that we possibly can uh, to make life more beautiful for ourselves and whoever is willing to listen. And as I say, your sacred essence within calls me to live the sacred life. The life of truth and justice, balance and harmony, righteousness, divine right order, and reciprocity. So in every cell, in every fiber of my being, of the temple that I be, always be septepi in me. And septepi is 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 in reference, particularly in reference to you know the first time, the first moment of creation. But creation is an ongoing process, and so. And I understand it, and so I'm I'm asking, submitting myself, in, in every way I can possibly understand and have courage and intelligence and spirit to do. Always be septepi in me. Let me be in the process of continuing the creation process as uh, we have come to understand is, is why we were brought here. So that's. That simple. What about anybody comment or question as we move on to the next? Okay, the second symbol is the uh, the Sinet game board, and uh, that that second symbol, the Sinet game board, which communicates the men sound of Amen, Amen, and it's a symbol for the eternity or permanence of the Most High, as well as divine intelligence and creativity, and the afterlife. Yeah, Senet was a very popular game in ancient Kemet, a, a precursor to drafts and chess and checkers and other game boards of strategy and skill. The success in the game of Senet required knowledge of and respect for the teachings and symbols of Kemet's spiritual tradition. And uh, now I can imagine, I don't know if you can imagine that the constant presence of elders pitting their Sinet strategies against one another with eager youths sitting there watching them looking on. Uh, but more importantly, understand that the most high entrusts measures of the qualities represented by this uh, uh, to each of us um, to enable and empower us to perceive, to develop, to perpetuate the greatest good for the greatest of our numbers as we work 
think and breathe together as one. And uh, just, you know, when I discovered this, and, and as I grew and understand it, as I think I understand, I, I could see, um, I got it up here on this screen, it's about seven, seven related to Mat, to the virtues and Guzo Saba. Um, and of course, the seven is that there are seven, seven aspects of Mat that we that we've identified. Well, we got them listed already up there. And you know, I, I'm reducing I'm reducing the virtues. We have ten virtues. I'm reducing them to seven because there, there's some related. And so it's it's uh, control of thought, control of action, devotion to purpose, and then. Uh, dealing with truth, and I'm in, I'm incorporating the three the three uh, the, the three um, dimensions of truth that are mentioned in the virtues: trusting in the master to teach us truth, trusting in my ability to assimilate the truth, and my ability to wield the truth. So I'm putting all those together in one. Uh, then to get to the next one: um, uh, freedom from resentment under the experiences of persecution. And pers uh, and the spirit experience of wrong, conducive, reducing those to one. That's five, I think we're at now. Uh, number six would be uh, cultivating the ability to distinguish uh, right from wrong. Uh, you know, that which is love from that which is hated. That's number six. Number seven would be cultivating the ability to uh, uh, distinguish the real from the unreal. And, and in my interpretation, uh, the real from the unreal is to, to know when it's mocked and know when it's not, and especially within myself. Um, so those those are the seven aspects that, that relate to. You know, look at that sonnet there. There, there are seven seven uh, uh, pieces up there, and, and that's not that's not the the, the the there's more than seven pieces in the sonnet game, but but somehow this illustration that was presented um, this has a seven, and so. The, the, the seven kind of jumped out at me. The seven aspects of, of Mark, seven uh, aspects of the virtues, if we reduce them like I did. And of course, the seven principles of the Inguzo Saba. And of course, the declarations, there are far more than seven of those. We can go what, six or seven times, seven, uh, or even more. But uh, you know, this, this, this is as simple as saying, you know, if, if we want to, to uh, go into the afterlife, be accepted in the afterlife. You know, we've got to do some something in this life, in this temporal existence that's consistent with uh, what's been entrusted unto us by the Most High, what we've been called to do as we've come into life. And so we've got to live with much. We've got to, we've got to live with those virtues. And we've, we've grown to embrace, you know, the Kwanzaa tradition. It's not just some little seven-day holiday, but it's 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 something for us to embrace 24/7 and live and, and enhance and uh, you know what what we know uh, from other spiritual sources as well as also you know examining those declarations of innocence and uh, of course the declarations don't say you've never done any of those things but but you you've grown in your spiritual consciousness and commitment that uh, you know I, I I do all I can in every way I can not to do any of that stuff that when I stand before the judgment, uh, or I'm represented by my, by my, uh, what do you call you folks that, that are still here? You go. Um, that they that they will be able to say on my behalf. Yeah, he, he that doesn't do that stuff. Anyway, so you know, I I found some words that that helps me, you know, communicate to myself and keep and you know alive in my heart and mind. What this sonnet is, 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 is communicating. It's spirit of eternity, intelligence, and creativity. I pray that the life I lead, endeavoring always, endeavoring always to honor the spirit of my and the teachings of our sacred way in my thoughts and my words and actions that will allow me to be one with thee, one of thee, in my, uh, in, in the kingdom of eternity, when the day and hour of transition visits my temporal being, always be septepi in me. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Wow. Let's see, I don't know what I did with, with uh, I'm clicking some buttons here and I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing. But anyway, that's, that's, you know, my, my experience, my reflection on uh, that aspect of the Salman Ra symbol. And so beneath, beneath the Sinead board, we have this rippling water. And the rippling water is a phonetic complement, which serves to add emphasis to the in sound of Amin. Uh, before you get too deeply into that, Makalisi, um, yes. uh, back to the, um, uh, the previous, the Sinead board and the virtues. Uh -huh. And because um, a couple of the virtues are free from resentment um, under persecution and free from resentment under wrongdoing. How, how, how do you interpret that? And maybe uh, uh, maybe Minister Imhotep may have some, some um, thoughts as well. Okay. Well, you know, there, there's another, let's see, where is it? Um, I think in one of the versions, you know, the declarations, declarations have, have different versions because different communities in, in Kemet uh, they're, they're pretty much the same, but different communities sometimes had different uh, aspects of life that they looked at. And one of the one of the, one of the declarations says, "I have not been angry without a just cause." And so I kind of mix that with with resentment. Uh, and it's it's all right if somebody's doing you wrong, it, especially if it, if, it, if it's a persecution. I mean, they plan to do it wrong if it's persecution. Exactly. Uh, the other, you know, uh, wrong is somebody might have made a mistake. And 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 so. If, 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 it's a, if it's a cause that, that's, that gets to you and, and, and makes you uh, upset uh, and you feel like you have to do something about it, then try to do something that's not going to make it worse. That's going to find a, a, a solution to the problem, find a way to get that person or that force or whatever it is to stop doing it or recognize the, the discomfort in life that it's causing. But the, the resentment you know, you you let you let that ex, that that experience, you let that situation take control of you, take control mm -hmm. of your life, and you just go off and do stuff that might make it worse. And so, that's that's how I've I've come to deal with that and and more or less accept it. Uh, but it it was it was you know difficult. Uh, and, I don't know. That's 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 my my take on it. I don't know what you know, M Hotep or somebody else has some. Uh, if you know, what what what's your thoughts, Brother Kadabazi? I um I I I, I struggle with it. Um, I I I came away with, with the conclusion that um, it is possible to react and to work against wrongdoing and persecution without, like you say, descending into that, uh, that deep abyss of, of, of just wretched, uh, irrational hatred, yeah. uh, because that, that can be very destructive. But that's kind of the way I saw it was, was the intensity of the, of, of the, of the injury as as you perceived and held on to it. Uh huh. Okay. I think um, you know when you're talking about Mott and having your heart light like a feather. Um, a lot of times, those resentments are what uh, weigh your heart down, and uh, and many times, just even in life, you tend to think, you know, you're holding on to this wretched r rage. I heard somebody say in a poem once, and the other person, they don't even care. They don't even think, yeah. uh, you know, as the, as the old people said, they're not even studying you, you know, <laughs> they, they, they're not even, they, you know, and, and so then that, you know, it, it actually tears your body down, you know, you, you it raises your blood pressure, does, does things, and so, um, you know, uh, Dr. Favors up here in Sacramento, her and her husband, John, 
uh, they were educators. And between the two of them, they had like 100 years of education. And uh, Dr. Catherine Favors had done this thing called uh, a thematic education, which means a well-rounded, you know, it's not just math, but it's, you know, it includes a lot of other things. So I think, uh, you know, the virtues, this explanation of uh, Amun Ra is, is thematic. It has, it has a, a many uh, parts that are, that are all connecting and all in inclusive. So, you know, freedom from resentment and, uh, you know, having your heart right and all that, uh, I think just adds to your overall being. Uh, as a uh, as a balanced uh, person, that's uh, that that's what I would add. Uh, I would I would say though that uh, the seventh and eighth virtue are ones I'm working on personally. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Minister Amadi? Any thoughts? May I have say something? Yes. Oh, this is Gloria. Yes, I can't all right now because the, the, the screen but um i guess um when i when i hear freedom from resentment um for wrongdoing and uh persecution um i hear a forgiving heart forgiving heart and a forgiving uh mindset and these are Forgiveness does not mean that you allow the injustice to keep occurring, but forgiveness is for yourself to be light as a feather, as as uh, Minister Imhotep stated. So when I hear that, I hear um, forgiveness. Forgiveness is for yourself so that you can move forward and not hold on to the uh, energy, the negative energy and the, of, of uh, resentment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, okay. yes, yes. And, and, I, and I think, you know, somewhat related to that is, uh -huh. uh, is a passage in the Book of Prayers and Sacred Praises on page 17 where Nebra says, Though the servant is inclined to make mistakes, the Lord is inclined to be merciful. The Lord of Thebes does not spend a whole day in anger, but is angry for but a moment and none of it remains behind. The wind turns for us and in the mercy of the Most High comes back upon the breeze. May your spirit always be kind, may you always forgive and may what has been once, what has been, what has once been turned away, not come back to us. So that's, you know, of course, of course, I'm in rise, the perfect energy, the perfect power and can do that. And you and I, we're trying to get there. Um, but again, you know, if, if someone is doing something, we've got to try to find a solution. And, uh, you know, forgiveness is, is part of that. Uh, but if, you know, if the person or force, whatever it is, keeps on doing what they're doing, then uh, we're gonna have just cause for being angry and uh, find a way and uh, hopefully it won't lead, it won't have to lead to, uh, you know, war, but somehow we have to find a solution to that and not let, let uh, especially the persecution that this someone is planning this, uh, uh, you know, but uh, we, we, we try to work on ourselves, work on the situation, be free from if I may add, yes, sir. Yeah, I was just going to add that um, one thing about freedom from resentment, you know, from my perspective, is that the reason why you don't have resentment is because you're striving to, as you follow the, the, the pathway of my aunt, then actually that's the pathway of power. And as you stand on these principles, then the principles begin to support you so that when you operate in truth, justice, righteousness, propriety, harmony, order, balance, when you when you when when that becomes your life, then you don't have to feel resentful for whatever anybody does because you have your power and you are operating from a place of power. 
So there is no resentment in there because you're focused on what you're doing. You're focusing on your choices. And, and, and even if you have to defend yourself or whatever you have to do, you have to do, but you're doing it, you know, not out of uh, anger or resentment, you're doing it because, you know, this is my proper response to what's happening to me. I'm not resenting you for the fact that, you know, you're whatever you're trying to do, but I'm also operating in my own freedom and power to make my own choices on how I want to respond. So there's no resentment because when, when you have resentment, you're sort of giving away your power in a sense. So that would just be my, um, you know, my, my take on it that, you know, when we're operating in power and you know who you are, you know that you're walking in alignment with the laws of nature. And so therefore, you know, what is there to resent when you're, when you're like you said, when you're making, you know, when Septepi is in you and you're doing the things that, you know, uh, that, that create goodness in the world. Then you know that you're that, that that like the Bible says, you know, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So sort of like captured in that particular understanding. I see. I see. That's Can I add my two cents on forgiveness? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, you know, you know, that word itself invokes a lot of uh, emotions and invokes a lot of uh, debate. I'm often reminded of uh, when, uh, I hate to even say his name, but I will for the sake of this discussion, when Dylan Roof murdered the nine parishioners in church. And when he was uh, standing for his arraignment, uh, the family members were in so much grief and in so much pain that they felt obligated to forgive one who had not sought forgiveness. And so it always, re, it always brings up that debate. For, forgiveness, in my humble opinion, it should not be automatic. If I'm committing sin, I have a, an insatiable desire to commit sin. I am required to get on my knees and pray to God Almighty, confess the sin that I have committed, ask and seek forgiveness. Then and only then should it be considered. I don't think forgiveness should be like a pardon that a person is automatically forgiven no matter what they have done, no matter what heinous crime they have committed without acknowledging that they've committed that crime. And then with a heartfelt uh, uh, plea, seeking forgiveness for what they've done, because now you're acknowledging that you've done something wrong. Now it's up to me to say, you know, uh, I have to consider forgiving this person, but I see so many black people struggling and say, I forgive you, you killed everybody in my family and I forgive you. And I can see myself sometimes hollering at the TV saying, he has not sought your forgiveness. He did not acknowledge the sin that he committed. Why do you think forgiveness is something that is automatic and you are destined to do? All right, so. Well, there's, there's no doubt about it that this, that it's a, it's, a, it's a challenge and, and, and it's, it's hitting, you know, hitting us at different levels and, and different, with le different levels of intensity and uh, we're working as a minister of Mahdi we share, we're, we're working towards, you know, that, that, that perfection that we know that we understand is, is the most high and is, is, is a possibility within ourselves. And so we, 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 we try to find, you know, the, the, the solution, the response, the answer to a situation that uh, won't make it worse. It won't have us doing something that uh, it, it'll hurt us even more than we'd like to hurt the person that, that's responsible for, for bringing this kind of situation on. So uh, it's, it's work that we have to, to do on ourselves. And uh, um, it's, it's not always easy. <laughs> and so we just have to do that work. Can I prolong uh, this a little bit uh, longer? Uh, sure. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> You know, um, we are all manifestations of the divine. I see. So um, when we're really forgiving others, we're really forgiving ourselves. Um, you know, and conversely, you know, with the um, point that Malik raises, um, I think in that instance, we have to look at how we as African people have been programmed. Uh, and uh, Malcolm says, uh, if you're south of the Canadian border, you're south. But um, just 
you, you know, a lot of times people that are raised in the South, um, and, and forgive me, uh, those that are listening that are from there, um, a lot of times they have that, you, you know, that they need to do that, uh, you know, and particularly if the person is white. Uh, and, and so that's something that we all have to examine internally uh, on that, you know, am I, am I, uh, what was that phrase Makalisi used just to, uh, he said something like Mott, uh, it, it'll come to me, but we, we have to, we have to ask, we have to ask ourselves, am I doing this as a, um, as a, as a entity, as a being that recognizes my divinity and so I'm, I'm connected with all or, or have I just been programmed to uh, do this because the person is white? You know, we, we have to, or, you know, or, or conversely, am I, am I holding, holding on to my anger just because the person is black? You know, because we've been, we've been programmed that way too. It's a it's a complex um, um, uh, issue that that uh, all of this raises, and I'm glad we're having this discussion today. Can I add one final thing? Yes. I wasn't going to say anything because I felt like this touched exactly on what just happened, and this is not trivial, but it sounds trivial. My sister's in a nursing home, and. Um, I don't know, maybe Monday, Sunday, she noticed that someone had taken two packets of oatmeal from her room. And um, this was such a violation that she was just, she was livid and she called me, she was like hysterical. She told a lot of friends and just kept repeating this over and over again. And she got herself worked up into such a snit that she ended up having to go to emergency and um, and was hospitalized. And when we, I talked to her yesterday, I said, do you, you think this is because you got worked up over those two packets of oatmeal? And she said, yes, yes. So you were talking about the heart. As soon as you guys said heart and anger, like several people said heart. And I just, um, and of course, you know, she's, she has a weak heart or whatever, but but she walked herself right into this over oatmeal. And, um, you know, I told her today, like, you're going to get oatmeal for Christmas if you don't watch it, because <laughs> it's so trivial. But the things that are important to some, and some people can walk through, other people cannot. And then I will just finish with this, because um, Born in Chicago, family from Mississippi, raised by my grandmother from Mississippi. I know I have some of that Southern whatever. And I think sometimes in business, I wonder sometimes in business, as I interact with in situations where I'm the only black a lot, if, um, you know, like if I'm right, if I'm right, if I'm strong enough, if I'm aggressive enough, and so I guess I just want to say um, not everybody from the South has that issue. And, um, and being in, 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 um, in business, um, I think many, many Black people might give pause if they really had to think stuff through. That's it. Thanks. Yes. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. This is, we're all here for a true confession. And um, <laughs> I know I am. And so uh, I, I thank you for, for sharing that, um, uh, Minister. Uh, we, we've just uh, interrupted your whole presentation. <laughs> no, but this is, I know this is part yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And so, well, you know, I, I would take us back before we move on to, you know, my words for, to myself. I don't know if these are, are, are meaningful or helpful to anyone else, but spirit of eternity intelligence and creativity i pray that the life i lead endeavoring always to honor the spirit of mind and the teachings of our sacred way in my thoughts my words my actions will allow me to be one with thee one of thee 
in the kingdom of eternity, when the day and hour of transition visits my temporal being, always be set heavy in me. And so whether it's, whether it's that, that, that piece about resentment or, or some other part, it's, it's always about, you know, help me to find the way of life that it puts me in harmony it puts me in in, in order with what the, the, the teachings say to the to the ele to the degree to the level that i understand it. and i'm doing all i can to understand it the best way i can and uh we we get you know these interactions between sisters and brothers of the way can help me to see some dimensions that that maybe i didn't see on my own so um you know that, that's for me that's where it is um, so we move on. <laughs> that beneath the synod, the synod board is the rippling water, and it's a phonetic complement which serves to add emphasis to the end sound of Amen. It's also said to represent the sound of the energy of the Most High doing the work of creation. And it serves to remind and emphasize that the work of creation is ongoing with the continued flow of the sacred breath of life, that each one who partakes of that breath is empowered and expected to undertake a righteous and purposeful role in the ongoing work of creation. Um, and so words that have, that have come to me uh, relative to, to that rippling water and the sound of, of Amen Ra, Amen, um, is divine generosity, if you can see the next page there. Uh, divine generosity, holy, sacred sovereignty, thanks and praises for the sacred measure of septepi essence that flows within every breath of life. Your continuing call to one and all to rise up, to be one of thee, one with thee, every hour of every day. Always be septepi in me. And again, with that, that end sound being known as the sound of the spirit of the most high doing the work of creation. Because every, every time we utter that name, uh, and especially if, if, we, if we prolong it uh, in, in, a, in a meditation process, like I do, um, I'm, I'm inviting it. I want to be one with that open to that 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 creative energy of the most high is continuing to come to me to we to all of us in in every breath of life if i'm understanding this right and sharing it right uh, uh, that that I, I want that to, to always come and be a part of me help me to grow and be an understanding you know the role that i've been entrusted to play blessed to play blessed to be uh one with amin ra one of Amen Ra. Amen Ra. Amen. Let that in resonate. Wake up, boy. Ashi. So that's Amen. Ashi. Um, I don't know. Any thoughts or any comment anyone want to make on that aspect? Okay, uh, I just, then, I, you, yeah. you know, that rippling um, it, it's just for me, when I see it, it's, it's not only the water, but it's the vibration, mm -hmm. you, you know, and um, as Minister Amadi had mentioned, you know, he, he invoked the word Bible and, um, you know, in uh, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. And, um, you know, I happen to uh, be on um, a, a, a site for uh, NASA and it had this thing called the singing sun, you know, and they had put all these uh, uh, instruments up to record the sound that the sun was making and it was making, um, you know, it was making that sound. Uh, and so that's a sound that's continuing even now. It's, you know, so Septepi, you, you're, you're always including, I notice Septepi. It's not just something 
that happen at one time at the beginning of creation That's that it, it is continually reverberating uh, out and uh, as you know in in about 30 minutes you know the women of Wose are going to be meeting and so you know I came uh, and to my wife and I was very excited hey uh, you know the the, the sun is making this the sound and you know what she said she said well what did you expect it to sound like you, you know like 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 duh you know mm -hmm. so when when i when i see that um rippling that that's a vibration for me that's that's continually mm -hmm. going out uh you know absolutely absolutely you know creation is not a that there is a that there is a hum to the to the universe itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the universe is composed of this dark matter. Some ninety percent of the cosmos is of this this dark matter, and the physical bodies, the planets, and the suns, and the stars, um, um, only represent. Uh, uh, about 10%, and that uh, uh, the astrophysicists have heard and acknowledged this, this sound of the universe and this kind of lack of, this kind of lack of home. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's to the Western mind, but uh, to a, a more attuned mind, it could very well be that, that, in, that in sound. Yeah, indeed. And that's that's what our teachings share with us that that, that rippling water represents the sound of the spirit of the most high doing the work of creation and uh, it's not a once done forever done it's an ongoing uh, situation and and you know these these it's like stolen legacy. They, they, they come along, they find stuff that, 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 that our ancestors develop consciousness and understanding insights that our ancestors develop, and they find ways to take credit for themselves, and uh, they put it to use, and uh, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it could be valid and it's all related, but our ancestors understood that thousands upon thousands of years ago. Uh, and You know what also, uh, Minister Matlisi, is that you know, when you mention that, we're talking about people that discover people that are already in locations. You, you, you know, they, they come to America or, or a place that they're calling America and they discovered ah. the people yeah. that were already there. You, you know, so all of these things are out there now. You know, the flowering wreath, the concept, the, the game board, the the squiggly line, that, those are all aspects of the divine that are just there waiting to be discovered, remembered. Um, and and this, what I like about it is it's nothing that anybody invented, you know, that, that is just something that's in creation for, for ourselves. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed for us to discover within ourselves and bring it to bear on our lives, every, all circumstances. Yes, yes. So we move on to the, uh, to the mouth that's over to the right of the game board. Um, the right of the game board is the mouth, which communicates the R sound in Ra. It can also be perceived as communicating the entire, in my view, uh, the entire, uh, uh, um, seeing, hearing, breathing, perceiving, declaring, de declaring, and creating process of the most high as stated in the Memphite theology. I don't know if, if, if we need to give reference to that. Uh, uh, so on page six in the book of Knowing the Creations, uh, uh, run to the third paragraph there, the seeing of the eyes, the hearing of the ears, the breathing, uh, of the nose are communicated to the heart and mind and the heart and mind cause the perceptions to come forth and what the heart and mind think and wish is declared by the tongue so were all the divine powers created and the divine powers completed. I, you know, I, I, I take that, our, our, our scholars, our priests way back then were, were you know, we're talking about the scene of that, we're not talking about, you know, 
eyes like we have. But this is the, the power of vision that's beyond our imagination. I understand the power of hearing beyond our imagination, the power of, of, of breathing and the, the vibrations that are received by the by the most high and 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 and, and the, the, the perceptions and the analysis of the most high and and, and deciding you know, what 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 what's going to be made of these and calling them into being. But in, in our in our in our priests and scholars in, in that day of time put it into some some wording that uh, would help our, our ancestors understand well this you know this is something I've got some measure of that too. We got we got to work together to to, to bring that in, into our lives and, and, and work it, make life more beautiful, more beneficial for us. Um, so it serves to remind us and inspire us that these same powers have been entrusted to us by which to perceive and bring into being the community of truth, love with family, loved ones in all the world. Uh, um, and and the, the words that I'm led to that, that resonate when I meditate on the symbol this is in me let your heart arise with love and might energize power to perceive and analyze that which comes through the seeing of my eyes and the hearing of my ears and the breathing of my nostrils power to perceive and realize that which is and that which ought to be for the greatest good of family and community and all dimensions of life so let the words of my mouth always reflect that sacred and creative reality and add to the energy of family and community to work together in unity to create and maintain that which provides for our greatest good. Always be except happy in me. Amen. So that's that's my take on that on that uh, aspect of I'm in wrong I'm in the, the, the mouth and what 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 uh, creation of Ra as Pata communicates to us about what happened what is where are these words that come out of mouth where do they come from they I mean, come from your heart allow your heart to be uh, you know know what's in your heart know thyself yeah know what's in your heart analyze what, what 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 you see what you're feeling what you're hearing and and uh, come up with that which is going to make life better for yourself for our people ultimately for all humanity but you know all that starts at home so let the words of my mouth always reflect that sacred and creative reality um that's what I see and feel and hear when we talk about the mouth, communicating the R sound in Ra. Um, move on unless anybody has some comments you want to make, questions to raise. Now the, the hand and forearm beneath the mouth communicates the A ah sound in Ra. Additionally, it represents the full range of creative acts and blessings that come forth from the hands of the Most High, giving, receiving, setting of limits, opening of new vistas, serves to remind and inspire those who revere the image and essence of nature, God within, to be unceasing in turning our hands to the deeds and actions um, to create that create, protect, and perpetuate the community of truth and love. And the words that have come to me say, let every cell and fiber, every muscle and bone of the temple that I presently know as home be ready, able, and willing to work diligently with family and community to establish and maintain that which provides for our greatest good. Always be set happy in me. I'm in Ra, I'm in Ra, always be, except heavy in me. Then we get to the, the solar disks and its accompanying determinative stroke. These are determinatives that play no role in the sound but serve to clarify that we are referencing Ra. 
We're a spirit of life that manifests its presence and uh, purposes in and through the powers of the sun. It serves to remind and inspire us to always do all we can in every way we can to be the sun of truth, beauty, and goodness, hope, and love in the sky of family, community, and loved ones. And to let that power always be present in the sky of our own consciousness. And so words that have come to me say, let your light shine on me until my heart is truly free. Free to live as one with thee, one of thee, here and now and for all eternity. Always be set heavy in me. And we know the teachings tell us, you know, the, the sun comes to do the, the job that it's been created to do and, and manifests itself of its own energy. Uh, so, so we have to find that energy within ourselves to, to live up to, to grow up to the fullness of the energy, the essence, the spirit of the Most High living in and through us, doing the, the work of creation, the work of community building, sharing the, the teachings of our way. Um, let your light shine on me to my heart is truly, truly free to do those things, not waste my time while following my heart, but follow it to the finish from the start. And then finally, we have that anthropomorphic symbol over there to the right, another determinative having no role in the sound, but serving to clarify the, the preceding word or phrase, give some meaning to the preceding word or phrase. It serves to clarify that we are indeed referring to the essence of Amen Ra, nature, God, the great spirit of life within humans. It serves to trumpet the truth embodied in the insight that came to us through Amen's work. That this great spirit is not something cut off, not something separate from ourselves. It's an energy in us, strongest in our working, breathing, thinking together as one people with it and with each other. And so I say, divine creator, strong liberator, sacred ancestors, eternal parents and elders, always be set heavy in me. You know, well, at one time I was taking that, that, that symbol over there to be a symbol of, uh, to, you know, uh, representing uh, Amin Ra, but I, I've grown to understand no, that's, that's not what it is. It's, it's a symbol. That's 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 that our ancestors used to uh, to represent our people. It represents divinity and humanity. It represents royalty and uh, and you know common common persons and represents what what uh, I I think and I could be wrong. Somebody knows better. I, I think this represents uh, Asar more than it represents uh, anyone else. And and our and that Asar is is, is a is an energy or force in the afterlife. Um, and, and if, if we, or, or that's one of our goals, and important, maybe the major goal, if we put it in the right context, we want to be in that afterlife. That we, we want to be remembered. We want to be ins inspirational to our, our children and their children and generations beyond measure. Uh, where is it? And somewhere in destruction of black civilization, Dr. Chancellor is sharing with us, it's the last thing the last thing in the African tradition, the last thing you want is to be forgotten when you move on from this temporal life. And so all these, these, these symbols and their, what, what their meaning, what they incorporate for us and what we want to incorporate within ourselves is uh, the means by which to get to that afterlife, to get to the place of, of, of being honored by being remembered because we, we we grew in manifesting the essence of the Most High, uh, sharing the sacred way, uh, letting the, the light of the Most High not only shine on me, there's that passage, let your light shine on me until I can see you, well, see you in myself. Uh, let your light shine on me until it shines within, it shines all through me. And uh, let me be the light of your essence, your presence in the sky of the consciousness of my family, my community, my people. Um, so um, I don't know uh, anyone 
any additional questions or comments on any of those aspects? Yeah, I like how you break the symbols down, explain them. Uh, that's uh, it's interesting. Yes, to, to say the least, uh, again, it's, 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 you know, for me, it's like growing to understand. This is not just throwing out a name of Amin Ra. It's not about giving you a picture of what Amin Ra looks like. This is giving you a picture, a uh, message about what's expected of you. This is about the character, the nature of, 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 of the Most High to, to the extent that, that we, with our ancestors, can understand, because I'm sure, I'm, I'm absolutely, there's no doubt in my mind that it's, it's far more, uh, you know, expansive, infinite than, than we can even imagine. But these are things that uh, they came to understand, taught, and endeavored to live. Uh, and uh, that's, that's our challenge. And, you know, in, in the process, while we're here in, in 2020, 2021, and going forward, there, there, there could be some things that we grow to discover that, that uh, need to be included. Um, and, 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 and we just keep growing in, the, in that direction. And, and we've had some experiences uh, in, you know, already and within the 40 years that Rose has been together that, uh, that, that we can look back and say, wow, this, this, <laughs> this never would have happened if we didn't you know, get even the limited measure of understanding that we have now. Uh, and there's more to come. And so we're going to endeavor to, to grow uh, in the sacred way, the sacred African way. But the sacred Mr. Way. Uh, it's, it's been asked, uh, Sister Dandiwe wanted to know uh, how we can get a copy of what you just uh, shared. And uh, uh, Gloria uh, seconds that emotion, uh, if I can quote Smokey Robinson. So um, <laughs> yes, how do we, <laughs> how, how can we get a copy of this? Oh, just give me some, give me some email addresses, and it'll be out as soon as. Well, soon okay. We so everybody, everybody, see that? Uh, put your email in the chat. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, ask Makalisi to save his chat, and uh, he'll, he'll send it out to you. He'll, he'll be glad to do that. Okay. So the, the last piece I have down here is. Uh, Let's all let's do all we can every way we can to grow in being one with one of that sacred essence within, and never allow any lesser power in the universe of life to lead us to neglect and disrespect it. And uh, additionally, there's there's a there's a what's the word uh, a connection to to an art, another article that's that's. You know, we've got some similarities to what's what's presented here in a, a, what do you call it? In a newsletter or a blog that 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 me and a partner here in, in Amelia do. So I would invite you to to, to check on it. Um, being and becoming one with with God within, <laughs> educate or die. <laughs> my son asked me, what, what's my yeah. Was it my son or was it someone else? Well, you know, my, I thought that was my brother. It looks like it's kind of some strong language you're using there. Well, if it, if it grabs your attention and makes you want to read it, well, <laughs> it's working. <laughs> um, but I, I would encourage you to read that. You know, I did some, some reference in, the, in that particular article to uh, some of the teachings that come through uh, Dr. Theophila Obenga. And, uh, I think related uh, significantly to what's presented in, in this in this material. So yeah, I'd be more than happy to share it with um, all who are interested in having it. And you, you, you I, I'm not trying to re, re, what's the word uh, guard any copyright material. You want to share it with somebody else, share it with somebody else. <laughs> So let's see, you said they're putting them in uh, yeah, addresses in, in the chat. Yes, so um, you can um, share um, your, I mean, you can copy the chat. Um, you know, I, I can't 
necessarily okay. see it uh, in. Um, see, I'm going to stop share right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Chat. And I then, see chat now. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and you can you can share you can make a copy of the chat. You know those three uh, dots over there. Um, actually, let's see. I guess you can just file, and you can save it on your computer, and uh, you know, then it, it goes in there, and, and then you have it, and then you'll have everybody's email, and you can um, you can send that to them, because uh, apparently people want to know, people want to see it. All right. And the last email that he shared with us uh, from that slide presentation, that will be in what he emails? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, his, what, what he just uh, showed us tonight is, yes. it's my understanding, that's what he will be uh, sharing. Uh, you know what, what I like about tonight is that we had, you know, we used to have these uh, Wednesday night prayer meetings, you know, where we would read uh, different scriptures. And this, actually, Minister Makalisi had requested uh, that we do that, uh, uh, use some of our Wednesday night session, sessions to do that, to kind of refine ourselves um, on uh, various aspects of um, theology and, and scriptures and uh, uh, medu nature. And, and so that's what he did. Uh, with us tonight. Uh, it started out with Amun-Ra, uh, broke it down, uh, as it were, uh, literally. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that everyone got to express their their feeling about it. You know, as we, as we grow closer together as a family, as we gr grow closer together uh, individually and collectively, uh, these sessions are important. Uh, for, you know, just a greater knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Um, and and Makhlis is very humble about it. He's, you know, he puts, he's done a lot of research, but then he says, hey, I'm not the uh, sole authority. And then he expresses, hey, you can, um, you can use this as well, you know, for, you know, if you want to share this with someone, which is, um, which is always great. Celeste, you came back in, were you able to see, um, Take yourself off from you. Were you able to uh, uh, see uh, Makalisi's screen when you came back? Yes, I was. Okay, cool. So that worked out great. Cool. Hey, um, now, uh, I, I've done what you said about, about hitting the, 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 the chat and hitting file. I don't know what to do to make sure it came through. Where, 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 where am I supposed to look at my computer to make sure it's here? So if I hit file and click your computer, it goes into, okay, it has like documents I have here. Uh, let's see, I, I was just saving it. The other day, I had I didn't have any. Oh, it's so, okay. So the 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 uh, three dots to the side of file says save chat at the top. Yeah. Click that, and uh, it should go to your desktop. You know okay. that. Yeah. That, it goes uh, to the document file, or yeah. maybe even downloads. Yeah. So it should go. Uh, to your to your documents or on your desktop. Um, I saved it, so if you don't have it, uh, you know, I can I can share what I what I saved uh, with you. Okay. Okay. All right. So one yep. way or another, we will get it done. We'll we'll get it out to people, and I, I'm glad. I'm glad that people asked for that. You know, you just didn't say, mm. yes, we accept what you say. Uh -uh. <laughs> you know, they, they, hey, I, can I study this for myself? No, it's secret. No. Uh, 
You know, I think this helped us all as a community to get on the same page around some of the the icons and some of the things that define the Wose community. And that symbol I, is, is, I think is very important. And so we can all get a common understanding of those symbols when we talk to people and obvious people have questions, um, we, can, we can talk to them and we can relate the same story, the same, the same information so that we're all on the same page. Someone is no way out over here and somebody's way out over here, but we are on a common, uh, a common theme when you're communicating the aspects uh, of the community. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh, we definitely need that commonality of understanding, and uh, yeah. and and again, be be open to, to to growth. If someone someone has some idea that that oh, I never thought about that. Yeah, okay, we can incorporate that here, there. Or, uh, yeah. Or or you know, just understanding Medu Nature, like okay, if you look at uh, um, Hakim's, uh, excuse me, Malik's. Um, the background, you know, just just understanding what's what's in his back, what what that is saying, right. um, you, you know, just understanding the glyphs. I'm not um, really educated to enough to uh, to teach. There are many symbols since I've seen so many symbols, you know, I can point to, and then there's there's the written and then there's then there's something even deeper about each per you know it, it'll had a it'll have a a phonics uh reference but then it'll mean something even deeper when you start it mm -hmm. when you start uh delving into it so this is the part that we uh are doing we you, you know we're delving into the uh secrets um that our ancestors had. Um, it's just like now, you know, uh, okay, when you look on your computer screen, you see like that little icon to save, you know, it's, it, it's, it's actually not what you use to save now, but it's something, you know, it, it goes back to the, to the floppy days. Remember, remember when you used to put a flop, but, but so everybody here understands that because they used to use those. But you know, years from now, people people will be saying, "Why were they using that symbol again?" You, you know, they won't. You know, it won't. Um... <laughs> you, know, you know, like like okay, this this onk here behind me. Mm -hmm. You know, some people say that this is the um, this is the the feminine, this is the masculine, and this is the child. But then others, when you look at it, this is this is all female. This is the womb, fallopian tubes, the birth canal. You, you know, so uh, there's and, and others say, others say it's uh -huh. it's the the sun sending the energy down to the humans, and there's the, the creative uh, uh, potential that that that. That, that 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 facilitates yes yes and then yeah. if i can if, if i could even uh uh muddy the waters even further yeah. uh in in uh the book african origin of electromagnetism by yeah, yeah. uh nur ank Amen, he says this is the alpha and the omega yeah, you know, you, yeah. you if you if you took the alpha and the omega symbols, if you took if you put the omega on top and the alpha, and then then you'll then you'll have it. So, um, and keep in mind, it's called Medu Nature mm -hmm. or God's language. Mm. You know, people people always say, "Is it the word of God?" Well, the way that our ancestors wrote, yes, it is. The word of God. So, okay, Minister Makalisi, excellent uh, presentation, and we're going yes, to get it yes. out. We're going to be able to send it out to uh, to everyone, and uh, that would be um, 
that would be great if uh, I can figure out how to do how I did this again. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Debbie, do you know? <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, okay, we'll get it done. I think. Uh, uh, can you save your chat? I, I think I've saved mine. Um, I did. I did. Okay. All right. Can you send it to Minister Makalisi? Sure. Sure. All right. Outstanding. Well, there you have it. See, there's you there's have so you have things. my you have my email address. I think when we were students in your class that you were copied in the email addresses. I ended up having a lot of addresses because of that. But if I don't, okay. I, I can ask um Hotel yes. yes, yes. Okay, All there's right. so many brilliant people on our on our Zoom. Uh, as I'm looking around, I'm not just trying to just say this to curry favor, but there are a lot of brilliant people. Uh, when I come to Wose that, that I'm associated with, you know, that's why I study so hard because I try to stay just one step ahead of you because because uh, you guys are so brilliant. All right. So uh, next week uh, we're going to talk. We're going to have like a, a Kwanzaa overview. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about the the whole Kwanzaa table. We're gonna talk about why to have it. Is it a black is it a black Christmas? Um, you know, is this Muslim? Uh, no, uh, you know, whatever the uh, questions, we're gonna pull out, uh, let's see, do I have it here? Uh, we're gonna pull out different, there are so many books on Kwanzaa. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about, there's, there's children's books. There's, uh, uh, Malana Karinga has like about three or four different versions of of Kwanzaa, uh, you know, we're gonna, so we're gonna talk about that uh, next week. And uh, uh, and I'm also gonna talk about Santa Claus and the origin of Santa Claus. And um, you might, it, it actually goes back to a netter uh, uh, by the name of Bess, you know, and he's mm -hmm. a Twa person. And uh, he was associated with uh, childbirth and giving gifts. So, uh, and then as, as we go on, we'll talk about St. Nicholas and how he was a, a, an Ethiopian uh, bishop in Turkey, St. Nick, you know, so we're, we're going to hit all those spots uh, and talk about Kwanzaa as well. So it should be exciting, I hope. Uh, so, did, 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 you, yeah, did you see in, in the news recently, about a week or so ago, where, where this, this uh, black family, I forget where they were located, I think it's somewhere in the south, and the brother put, they put a, a black Santa Claus out on their yard, in the front lawn yard, mm -hmm. and they got, they got some feedback from somebody about, and they put it on Facebook, or anyway, it was, the feedback was public, like, what are you doing putting this Negro Santa Claus out? There ain't no wherever they said. And and so when the when the community, the integrated community, found out about it, there was a black Santa Claus put up all around the place. Okay. Mm -hmm.